Hi everybody, it's Jenny. Welcome to this unboxing. I received several decks for Christmas. Actually, it's a nice story. Um, my husband had been collecting Barnes & Noble's uh, certificates, gift certificates that he'd gotten for his birthday and Christmas and whatnot. And I didn't know he'd been collecting them. And one day he told me, you know, I'm not going to use these, or I could use these, but I'd like to give them to you. So I got online on Barnes & Noble and I found like five tarot decks that I was able to get for the gift certificates that he had. So I thought that was just very lovely of him to gift me those certificates so that I could expand my addiction here and enjoy my hobby a little more. So this is the Chrysalis Tarot. I've seen this, I know it's a newer release um, and I've been anxious to get it. I did see a few of the cards online but I haven't seen everything. So let's go through it together. Now this is from US Games. I noticed right off the bat that the, the box is pretty huge and it reminds me more of a Llewellyn. But let's see how the rest of the set compares. So it's kind of a medium box. It's not flimsy. We've got a couple of pictures of cards on the back or on the uh, what would be the spine if it were a book. And then we have a little bit of information here. The set, the complete set includes the award-winning Chrysalis Tarot deck, custom spreadsheet, the eagerly anticipated companion book, the illustrated companion to the Chrysalis Tarot explores the spiritual journey of self-discovery that leads to higher consciousness. Author Tony Brooks guides the reader through the entire deck and relates the magic of tarot to other me metaphysical concepts. The 216-page book is illustrated with black and white sketches. Ah, there, we don't need to look for that. So we already know that uh, the book is not going to have any color pictures, which is fine as far as I'm concerned, as long as they just have the image there that I can uh, kind of refer to. So this is unusual. This is, uh, this looks like, there's the deck. It's in the flip top. And here's the little, um, here's the fold out they were referring to. Talks about a fairy ring spread. Oh my, it's a, um, it's a sheet to do a spread, but being that it's paper, I don't know that I'll actually use it. So that's what that is. The back side is just blank. So it's kind of a nice idea. You obviously aren't going to be using that more than a couple of times before it'll start to get beat up. Okay, and what else do we have in here? Here we have the companion book, so it's it's got papery, you know, I guess if you're careful with this, you could use it to store everything in. I don't know how long it will last, but, you know, I'll have to just be careful. So the book is very nice, very thick and chunky. Let's see, the illustrated companion explores the spiritual journey of self-discovery and transformation that leads to higher consciousness, part one examines the magic and energy of the other world that guides you on this journey. Each of the five chapters focuses on a character from the Chrysalis Tarot illustrated with an original sketch by Holly Sierra. Part two expands on the interpretations of the 78 cards. Oh, interesting. So the Tarot professionals voted this best deck of the year. I'm not sure what year that was. Let me see what year this was produced. Fairly recently, I know, 2016. So yeah, last two, well, it's now 2018, so a year, year and a half or so ago. Okay, there's a little information about the color illust cover illustration, a forward by Tally Goodwin. And then part one, I can't remember what they said, the part one was the magic and energy of the other world that guides you on this journey. So not related to the deck necessarily, I wouldn't think. I don't know, I haven't read the book obviously since I'm just unboxing it. 
So here's information about the tarot itself, this deck, uh, about six pages or so. Then they dive into part one. Okay, I'm going to have to read this. This is going to take some effort. I'm not always the greatest at reading the books that come along with the decks, and I really dislike a deck that you really have to um, figure out what the heck the cards mean or why they selected their particular artwork. Alrighty, but you know, I can do it. It's just, I have such a busy life, and I'm always on the go, and I'm involved in several clubs, so I don't have a lot of time to do this uh, reading. Storyteller's Vision Quest, Morgan's Cauldron of Rebirth, gosh the line drawings are just stunning, really beautiful. I don't know if these are all actual images from the deck or not. Guess we'll find out. Then part two, Major Arcana, Reversals, we go through the deck. Merlin, Ravens are the Magician, Sorceress, Gaia, the Green Man. Let me just read a little bit about the deck in general so that I'll know before we dive into it uh, exactly what the theme is. So she spent over three and a half years creating it. So our unique deck of 78 tarot cards was crafted to help midwife this new existential reality, a reality we describe at times as holistic consciousness and at other times as cosmic consciousness. They imply the same thing. We symbolize this new consciousness throughout Chrysalis Tarot with beautiful butterflies and striking symbols of personal transformation. Chrysalis marches to a different drum. It seeks to help you forge a pathway to destiny and cosmic consciousness. The pathway is the ageless hero's journey, the monomythic quest for unity. Alrighty. So, transformation in general is a really common theme in the tarot deck, in the cards. And this is an entire deck that uh, is focused on that sort of a theme. So I'm anxious to get into the cards and take a look. It's a little about the author and the artist. Acknowledgements. Okay. Okay, well there's the book. There's a lot of meat there, a lot to read. And I obviously cannot read it right this moment, but so on the back of the deck we have the healer, page of mirrors. Let's see. Flip top box. Isn't too difficult to open. Oh, and it comes with a little white book in addition to the big book. Ah, I don't know if you can buy just the deck with the little white book separately rather than a big set. I would imagine probably so. So here's the little white book. Let me just take a real brief spin through that. The Chrysalis Tarot. All right. And this book says copyright 2014. Okay, so they dive right in. See, we invite you to browse through the Chrysalis Tarot cards. You'll find familiar and unfamiliar trump cards making up the major arcana. 0 to 21 represent other world characters and archetypes. Next up, the 40 pip cards. Ace through 10 in each suit feature scenes that inspire personal reflection and stimulate your psychic intuition and imagination. The four suits that make up the minor arcana are stones or pentacles, mirrors for cups, spirals for wands and scrolls for swords. Finally, you will see we have replaced the traditional 16 court cards with a fun-loving troop of medieval troubadours. These merrymakers represent real-life messengers inspired by the other world to assist you, especially at critical moments and troubling crossroads. Tarot invites questions, inspires the mind, and whisks you on an adventurous journey within. 
a journey that is revealing, informative, and fun. We trust it will be as fruitful as those journeys that led us to imagine and create this unique tarot deck. Okay, so the little white book doesn't have any um, images or thumbnails, but we have the the new titles for the cards compared with the traditional titles, some keywords which they're calling attributes. And what else have we got here? Keywords for the miners. Okay, so let's get into the cards themselves. That's what everybody's been waiting for. So here's the deck. Here's the artist's title card, Chrysalis Tarot, Paintings by Holly Sierra, written by Tony Brooks, published by U.S. Games. Looks like the Wheel of the Wheel of Fortune card there. Now the backs, in keeping with the Chrysalis theme, we've got butterflies, vibrant colors, very realistic uh, as far as uh, they're painted in a similar. Oh, never mind that part. Okay, it's reversible if that's important to you. The deck back is beautiful. The card stock is nice. It's uh, feels a little bit stiff, not too flexible. It's very flat. It's matte, it's not glossy at all. And I'm just gonna go through these however they came, as they came out of the box. So the title card about the author and the um, writer, and the, about the author and the artist. <clears throat> Here we have Merlin, the hero. Love the cat. No, I don't know about having Merlin as the fool. He looks too old and wise to be a fool. <laughs> but he's the hero in this deck. Starting off on a journey, I would suppose. We have ravens for magician. I like that. I've got ravens in my neighborhood. I just learned how to tell a raven from a crow. If, they, if they're flying overhead and the tail is wedge-shaped or rounded, it's a raven. If it's blunt and kind of squared off, it's a crow. Never knew that. Thank you, Peterson Field Guides. So here is the raven. High Priestess is sorceress in this deck. Beautiful. Gaia, the Empress. Wow, what a stunning card. Look at the detail. The green man for the emperor. I somewhat like that. Man of the forest. Kind of, uh, kind of pairs really well with the empress when you have the empress as a earth mother. The emperor should be an earth father. I like that. Divine Child for the Hierophant. Hmm, I don't know about that one. I'm going to have trouble relating to that. Here are the Lovers. It's a beautiful, beautiful card. This is a very earthy deck. I like that about it. Herney the Hunter for the Chariot. Mott, Justice, the Storyteller for the Hermit, there's the wheel again, which we saw earlier. Papa Legba for strength. K 
Celtic Owl for The Hanged Man. Hmm, that's another one. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'll be able to relate to a Celtic Owl as a Hanged Man. It's possible. Different, different, different. Ariadne for Death. Golden Flower for Temperance. Again, I, I guess I'm going to have to dive into the book, which I don't like to do, to understand how this represents temperance. Bella Rosa as the Devil. Another one I'm going to have to... Uh, research. Callie as the tower. So as you can see we've got um, myth and legend from many different pantheons across the planet. Many different cultures in this deck. LP and I don't know where that one's from. The star. LP. I'm not familiar with that. It's a beautiful star card though. I like it. The moon. Wow, I like that too. Every deck has cards that you just love and other cards that you think, where in the heck did they get that idea from? The sun. I don't know why the sun's got a teardrop there. The sun is supposed to be happy. It doesn't look very happy. Here's Judgment, Phoenix. So I kind of get that idea as they have the, um, the dead rising and coming to life. We have a phoenix rising from the ashes. I can kind of, I understand that one. Here's the world, Psyche. It's a beautiful world card. Next we go to the suit of stones, which would be pentacles. Ace of stones, very earthy, love it. Very druid looking stone. Two of Stones with the Bear. Three of Stones, three Owls. Now we're back into this sort of a Celtic theme with these Stones cards. Four of Stones, the Treasure Box. Five of Stones. Six of Stones. The artwork in the deck, you, you've got to admit that it's just spectacular. Seven of Stones. Not every card is my personal cup of tea, but that's the way it goes. Eight of Stones. <clears throat> Here's the Eight of Stones. Nine of Stones. Very different as a Nine of Pentacles. It has more of a more of an Eight of Cups feeling than a Nine of Stones, but there she is. Ten of Stones. Next we move into the Cups or Mirrors in this deck. Ace of Mirrors beautiful. We've got the oceanic uh, water theme with all the water, kelp, sea life in the background. Ace of Mirrors. Two of Mirrors. This is a beautiful card. I saw this card. This is one of the cards that drew me to buy the deck. Two of Mirrors. Three of Mirrors. interesting concept. I don't know, the lion and the lamb don't seem to really fit the theme of Three of Cups, but possibly. There must be a connection that I'm not getting. I'll have to read the book. Four of Mirrors or Four of Cups. Five of Mirrors.
Here we have the Six of Mirrors. Seven of Mirrors. Oh, her mirror is cracked. All the different mirrors. That has a very typical Seven of Cups feel to it. Here is the Eight of Mirrors. Nine of Mirrors. Get that over where you can see it a little better. Got the little elf looking female and another fairy up there. Nine of Mirrors. The Water Drops has mirrors, that's cute. Ten of Mirrors. Now we move to, we're going to do the court cards, I imagine, at the end. This is how it came out of the box. Here we have Ace of Spirals, and I believe Spirals is to replace Wands. This is a gorgeous card. Oh man, what a lovely image. Ace of Spirals. Two of Spirals. How about that spirals inside the nest there? The wren, I think it's a wren. The berries. Three of spirals. Four of spirals. Oh, the spiral ferns there. Five of Spirals, the Dragon and Fire. I actually quite like that for Five of Wands or Five of Spirals. Six of Spirals. Victory Flags, okay, I can get that. I can relate to that one. Six of Spirals, Seven of Spirals. Kind of the Rider weight idea of holding your ground, defending your den, being a bit stubborn maybe. Seven of Spirals, Eight of Spirals, very typical Rider weight image of the traveling wands for the eight. Nine of Spirals, interesting, very interesting. Has more of an air feel to me than wands. Nine of spirals, ten of spirals. Very typical rider weight feel to this one, being overburdened. At the end of your cycle of whatever job you're working on. Ten of spirals. Next we move on to the air or scrolls, which would be swords. The bird and the ace, ace of scrolls, two of scrolls, three of scrolls, teardrop from the fox there. I don't know that animals cry tears like humans do, but hey, it's a fantasy deck, so we'll run with it. Three of scrolls, four of scrolls. So I can see that they're trying to uh, mimic the Rider weight feel for the cards. Here we have the resting Four of Swords or Four of Scrolls, resting phase, Five of Scrolls, the Sword and the Stone it looks like, Six of Scrolls. This one I don't know, I'd have to read the book to relate to it. Six of Scrolls, Seven of Scrolls, Eight of Scrolls, Nine of Scrolls,
and Ten of Scrolls. Alrighty, then we're going to the court cards, which have been uh, reimagined as uh, wandering troubadours, according to the book. So this is the King of Stones, or the King of Pentacles, which is the minstrel, King of Stones. Queen of Stones is the artiste. Knight of Stones, the illusionist. And Page of Stones is the Acrobat. Mirrors is next, the Sojourner, King of Mirrors. The Watcher is Queen of Mirrors. The Dreamer is Knight of Mirrors. The healer is Page of Mirrors. All right, for the suit of spirals or wands, we have the companion, King of Spirals. The muse, Queen of Spirals. The corsair, Knight of Spirals swashbuckling adventurer. Perfect. That's a good card, actually. I kind of like these court cards. It's just going to take a little working with them to, to transition to the new uh, look and feel of the deck. The Mime, or Page of Spirals. Interesting. So he's artistic, but he hasn't yet gotten his voice. Interesting. Okay. Next we move on to the suit of scrolls or swords. The king of scrolls is the poet. Oh, I can relate to that. The weaver is queen of scrolls. Queen of scrolls. And the visionary is knight of scrolls. And the Pilgrim is the Page of Scrolls. Those seem to fit fine for me. Okay, here are the four Queen cards. I've gone through and picked them out. So we've got a very different feel to each card. Now for the Queen of uh, for the Queen of uh, Scrolls, which they have pictured as a weaver, I would have more chosen a muse. Well, the cards are lovely. They're going to require a little bit of adjustment to get used to. Uh, I almost would prefer a pip deck or something that's not so visual for my personal deck for use. It's going to be difficult for me to use this deck unless you use it on a regular basis. You're going to not remember from day to day the nuances of different meanings. So that's just my impression from unboxing this deck. It's beautiful. The artwork is gorgeous, no doubt. Um, the card interpretations may require a little bit of working for me, and I don't know when I'll have the time to really do that, but I'm going to give it a shot, and uh, hopefully in the future I can make an updated video letting you know how this uh, works for me. All right, and let me know your thoughts if you have this deck. I'd love to hear from you. Take care. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you again later.